Alright mates, how's it going? In today's video, we're starting chapter 3 of Dawn of the Aspects. So let's go! Kalek? Kalek! It took the former Aspect a few seconds to realise it was Jaina's voice he could hear, but as he opened his eyes, he realised he was alone, which was a bit of a relief, to be honest. He would have been extremely embarrassed if Jaina had seen him passed out on the ground. He could see that he was back at the Nexus in his own body, although his body had somehow made its way to his favourite sleeping spot. But he didn't really care how he'd got there. He was more concerned about what the bloody hell just happened. But Kalek did have a pretty good idea of why it just happened. So he conjured an arcane prison, and immediately placed the artifact from Galakron's chest inside. Not only would this keep the artifact safe from other eyes, it would also hopefully stop it from playing silly buggers with his mind. He then sealed the prison, and sighed in relief. And then he thought about that voice that had stirred him awake at the beginning of this video. It wasn't the first time she tried to reach out to him since he'd left Dalaran, and he'd kept ignoring her calls. He was pretty sure even she blamed him, in part, for not finding the focusing iris. It was a real shame, but whatever there was between them, it was probably over. But then, he heard Jaina's voice again. Kalek, speak to me. She's bloody relentless. He wanted to ignore her again, but then thought, hang on, she's an archmage. Perhaps one of the greatest, considering she doesn't have any dragon blood coursing through her veins. She might know something about this artifact. I'm here, Jaina. As if by magic, a window to Dalaran appeared, and in it, Kalek could see Jaina. Recent events had hardened her somewhat. She never asked to become leader of the Council of Six, but that was basically decided the moment Ronin and her island kingdom of Theramore exploded. Plus, she was still dealing with her part in her father's death all those years ago, but she was still pretty damn sexy. Whilst Kalek tried to respectfully keep his expression neutral, Jaina smiled gratefully, and this actually made Kalek feel even worse. I was beginning to worry. I appreciate the concern, Jaina, but I'm fine. Are you? You look like shit. You're always burning the candle at both ends. Why don't you take a break? I can't take a break! Kalek immediately realised his words came out way too aggressively, so he tried to change the subject. How are you? How's things with the Kirin tour? We're struggling a bit. Things have turned upside down since your last visit. I've been forced to make some changes I don't like, but they're necessary. Kalek wasn't going to press her to elaborate on that, but there was now very much an awkward silence filling the air. Again, he found himself thinking that perhaps this was the time to end things. Maybe they just weren't meant to be. But then suddenly, out of nowhere, an image of young Alex Straza flashed in his mind, and it startled him. What was all that about? Are you ill? Kalek? Kalek couldn't hear whatever it was Jaina was saying. All he could hear was a dragon's roar echoing inside his head, but he tried to remain somewhat composed. Soz, mate, I, uh, just haven't been sleeping much, that's all. Just like you said. Are you sure you're alright? Another image hit Kalek, this time of another proto-dragon corpse, even more unsettling than Alex Strauss's clutch brother. And the sounds filling his head, especially the voices, were really starting to rustle his jimmies. Yes, I'm fine. I've got things to do and stuff. Kalek realised his excuses were not really making sense anymore, so he did the magical equivalent of hanging up on someone and dismissed Jaina's window. She faded out while saying something along the lines of, what the f***? Kalek, who was now basically under an onslaught from voices, roars and images, stumbled about a bit, and then fell to his knees. He couldn't focus at all. And guess what? He passed out. Again. And then he was back with Malagos. Time had shifted. Alex Straza was no longer accompanying him. But there were other proto-dragons in the sky. At least six different colours of the buggers. The reason for this gathering seemed pretty clear. There was a vast herd of grazers racing through the hills below. Kalek watched through Malagos' eyes as two proto-dragons returned with their ready meals and a smaller yellowish female dived down. But she didn't judge her dive that well and almost flew face first into the ground. And she was then joined by Alex Straza, who showed her how to do it without flying face first into the ground. Alex Straza almost seemed to feel guilty about killing the animal, but she offered the meal to the smaller yellow female, who was clearly quite hungry. And the smaller yellow female basically just snapped angrily at her. Ungrateful bitch. Malagos then obviously got bored of creeping on the two females and switched his focus to some other hunters. In particular, a coarse brown male proto-dragon, he was doing quite well for himself, seemed to be able to predict exactly what angle and speed the grazers below would turn. Whilst other hunters often returned with nothing more than dirt and grass on their face, he was coming back up with two at a time. Malagos admired his cleverness for a bit, and then got bored, because a fight broke out elsewhere. Two hunters had failed to snag their quarry, and were now spitting and hissing at each other. They weren't speaking though, just like that grey male they'd encountered in the last video. Malagos watched their exchange with contempt, and Kalek wondered why some proto-dragons had sentience, whilst others were idiots. Malagos then looked over to a group of dragons who were also enjoying the fight, while scoffing down their meals like popcorn. One blue-green male in particular noticed Malagos watching him, and kind of glared back at him, like, meh, Koros. The name suddenly popped into Kalek's head. 
Guess Malagos knows that one personally. Looks like they don't like each other very much. Koros maintained eye contact with Malagos the entire time, whilst nomming on a portion of bloody meat. As if to say, this here bloody meat is your throat, and I'm eating it, you twat. Which I guess could be viewed as intimidating. Unless he was eating something phallic, like a banana, and then that would have meant something completely different. Malagos was definitely considering fighting Koros, but this train of thought was interrupted when the small yellowish female approached. My brother. My sister says you found him. This was Alex Strauss' sibling. Bit weird. They're not even the same colour. We were three in the clutch. Now only two. Malagos nodded in understanding. Apparently, a clutch of only three eggs was viewed as a bad omen for a family. But it also explained why this sickly small yellow dragon still lived. In a healthier proto-dragon family, she probably would have been slain at birth. That's not me making some kind of awful statement, that's just a thing that they did. Your clutch brother. His death was... strange. Yes. How did he die? I don't know. There was another. No, Ethera! Alex Strazer interrupted very sharply, and whatever she went on to say next was completely missed by Kalik, because he was currently staring at this small yellowish creature in amazement. This is Asira. How and when did this weaker creature become one of the most powerful forces in all of Azeroth? And turn green. And we're leaving it there! That's another part done. I'm trying to adapt these as faithfully as I can, whilst injecting a bit of humour, but is anyone else starting to feel like we're just introducing characters that have already been introduced? It's like bloody Suicide Squad. In the next video, the word Galakrond gets used loads, so that's a good sign. As usual, link in the description if you're interested in buying the book. I'm not affiliated to any retailers, blah blah yada yada don't sue me. Also there's links to my Discord server and my Patreon page too. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!